tightly bound, contained and silent beneath the shackles of feeling swell and need to burst free and truly be. The tension presses gently, then with more further, no longer can it hold, bursting through into the open, an opportunity to now fully breathe. So, hello everybody. Um, my name is Dr Lucy Pursehouse and in this short presentation I intend to um, share with you some of my um, insights from my doctoral thesis. So, post-doctoral hiatus, a time to pause, reflect and go forward. And indeed, 2020 um, and the global coronavirus pandemic has enforced a hiatus on the world's population. And certainly from my own standpoint, the time has um, afforded me space to pause and reflect, particularly on my postdoctoral positionality. So following this space for reflection, um, I'm going to share with you some of the insights. So my thesis was entitled Growing Pains to Growing Shame and Beyond, a reflexive dyadic on stigmatised identity. And it was an autoethnographical thesis that was aimed at the telling of stigma stories related to myself, but also related to others, which in this case was siblings. And it was to reveal some of the complexities of the experience of mental health stigma within myself. Um, from a very early age, I visited an institution. I had a, one of my siblings had severe learning disabilities and resided in, in one of the very large asylums that obviously have now um, gone. So all of these asylums have been replaced, have, have shut. Um, so from a very early age, I became quite acutely aware of how as a family unit, we were perceived quite differently. So that had quite a profound impact on me. And from quite an early age, I also developed an eating disorder, um, which began and continued in complete secrecy for many, many years. The thesis drew also on critical pedagogy and particularly that of the late Brazilian educationalist Paulo Freire. And Freire's ideas were significantly influential in the framing of my thesis, in particular in connection to the notion of generative themes. And Freire asserted that within different times and different spaces, ideas and values hopes and fears very much manifested within a dialectical interaction with their opposite. So sort of the discourse around stigma um, has particularly, you know, been something that has, has perpetuated over the last um, few decades. And the purpose of this sort of dialectical interplay is to sort of consider some of these co concepts and to move to a greater awareness or a critical con consciousness. And also Jack Mazzero um, also asserts that attitudes um, risk becoming habits of mind and certainly this can be linked to stigma and a stigmatised identity is a habit of mind. And um, this had certainly become something that was very apparent within myself. So the autoethnographical thesis was very much the story of the beginnings of a perspective transformative process. And um, it was also about a story about institutional structures, which very much reflect um, a change in thinking. Um, that's related to mental health that has begun to shift people's thinkings into a more 
collective sphere, which is positive. Um, also, the current knowledge and research does indicate that the power of learning from the stories of lived experience and how they have quite a significant impact on changing people's attitudes, albeit it's not necessarily a long term shift in attitudes. And as I've said, um, as, as Jack Mazzero refers to, a perspective transformative process very much starts with um, a disorientating dilemma. And my disorientating dilemma, as I've referred to whilst undertaking the professional doctorate, um, was this ongoing unease that I wasn't able to share my lived experience. And it really became quite a significant, all encompassing um, psychic manifestation. Um, I trained as a mental health practitioner. I worked as a mental health educationalist, but I wasn't able to share my lived experience. And this very much became the disorientating dilemma. And the thesis captured some of the tensions that I encountered and how stigma had very much wielded a significant hold over my identity. So my autoethnography had arisen from my disorientating dilemma and the doing of the autoethnography, um, hopefully to enable me to step outside of what was a very suffocating liminal space and to move forward or move beyond. So during my postdoctoral hiatus, um, well, lockdown, firstly, has been a rite of passage. So I've seen it very much more as a liminal phase in which to reflect. And within this um, space, there's arguably been a greater openness um, collectively about mental health. Um, but on reflection, for me, the silence remains. There's a continued silence and hiatus um, and I have to question why. Um, it's like an insidious force or a self-enforced silence. So interestingly, I found that at times when I've shared my autoethnography, it is met with silence. It's met with a stillness and a silence and I have to wonder why this is. So I question that whether I've actually moved beyond and indeed has the disorientating dilemma continued. So some final thoughts, having had time to pause and reflect, um, it is important to be fully congruous with self, with myself and my teacher identity. So I realise now that I need to become more comfortable in the sharing of my stories, um, of which are cited here. So moving forward, that is the intention. And Thank you for listening and thank you for your time.